Hello and welcome back to No Prize Podcast. I am the professor. He is Lucas. And we are here to talk all things Marvel, and whether we like it or not. And we're, we're back with a, uh, well, well, we got a batch of books this week. Um, and we are going to wrap up Falcon and Winter Soldier, or as I've been calling it the entire freaking time, Captain America and Winter Soldier. <laughs> <laughs> and it's uh you know it's it's been it's been nuts i, I haven't been able to get the uh the, the the show's name right in my head i think i might have even f- slipped on a podcast a couple of weeks ago and called it cap and went to soldier but you know we'll see but anyhow i t- anyhow. I, I ended up right in the end so we'll see <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh yeah. so we're going to talk about. Uh, we got some stuff coming. We got we got Loki coming in a couple of weeks. We we got a we got a Shang Chi trailer drop, and we had a Modok trailer drop, and we have whoa, we have a cinematic release schedule. Yes, what? Up? Yeah, man, it is crazy. This is the way it should be. Unfortunately, the thing that's not on here is the Modoc, but I, I we'll talk about that later. But you know, hey, there is some great stuff that is coming coming forth. Unfortunately. We should already be like halfway through this thing, right? We should be like <laughs> halfway through this That's thing. That's true. Starting to freaking speculate about phase five right now, but but here we are, man. Um, but the first thing we're going to talk about, like you said, is you know Falcon and Winter Soldier, episode six, the final ultimate episode. My goodness, um, yeah. My goodness, you know. Look, um, once again. Going off of WandaVision, and you know, I went, again, I was scared off of that, and I was scared off of this one. Like, oh, man, dude, there's all types of ways that they can screw it up. They didn't finish as strong as we they, they didn't tie up everything that they needed, right? I yeah. was looking for them to tie up everything they needed, and then push me off onto other stuff. But I think they did. I think they took more care on pushing us onto other stuff than they did. Uh, WandaVision and some of the other moves. I think they did that perfectly, right? Yeah. Um, uh, you know, between the Dark Avengers and Thunderbolt connections that I I, I can see going forward, I think they did that perfectly. Um, and then in the meantime, there's a whole bunch of missing elements to say, oh, wait, that didn't happen. They didn't develop it, but guess where they probably did that stuff in? Black Widow, which means yeah. I had to watch Black Widow right now. Because, you know what, I keep forgetting, I keep forgetting that Black Widow is a thing. I keep. Yeah. I was like, I was like, man, I'm not gonna watch Black Widow now. I'm like, oh man, I guess I gotta watch Black Widow because it's, it's probably gonna be bombed the way these people are just showing up all of a sudden. So you know, you know the uh, the 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 feeling I get about Black Widow is that they've pushed it off so much. From I mean, it was supposed to come out a year ago, and mm-hmm. now it's not coming out till July. And mm-hmm. the re- the way they keep pull it, pushing it back, me, it's 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 saying to me. That it doesn't really have a lot to do with the the rest of the MCU and what they're doing right now, right? Because they're just willing to do it, and they're willing to show uh, Falcon Winter Soldier without us and having seen Black Widow, even though you feel like we probably should have seen it before we saw this. Right. Um, and same thing, you know, you know, with uh, you know, Wandavision, and like now we're we're like halfway through the initial announcements of the Disney plus shows. So now we got Loki and we got Hawkeye coming. Uh, it's so it seems to me like black widow is just going to kind of get lost in the shuffle. And with, uh, I think the, even by July, I think theaters are only going to be half open. Right. And right. we're going to be able to see it. We're going to be able to see it on Disney plus for the premium, uh, which, which is probably honestly, probably how I'm going to watch it. Um, right. But uh, I don't know. Like how many people are going to go out of their way to uh, to make this appointment viewing, and and then uh, putting it in the slot that it's supposed to be put in. Like I I know that, um, and I I you know I don't know if we were supposed to talk about the episode until like the end of the podcast, but we can talk about it now. <laughs> you know, it was so I mean with uh, with the introduction of Contessa Valentina Allegra de la Fontaine. Um, played beautifully by Julie Louis Dreyfus. I was she was a surprise to me in episode five, and yeah. um, to hear the rumors that she was initially supposed to appear in Black Widow, um, that it, like I it, I don't know. And then and now I'm sitting there going, well, did they edit her out, or Ooh. maybe it was 
You know, because if 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 she must have filmed scenes, if the rumor was true that she was supposed to appear in Black Widow, Black Widow was done before the pandemic started, right? right. So it's not like they would have had to retro go back and edit her out and then put her here where we see her for the first time. Um, so that is interesting in itself. The, the the saving grace about Black Widow is that it's a prequel, right? So it's supposed to be taking place before this, and so it was supposed to maybe see a younger Contessa. Um, and so backstory on, on Contessa, if the if any of the fans don't know who the hell she is, um, and I'm gonna I'm gonna delete the fact that later on in her continuity she becomes Madame Hydra because I think Hydra's done in the MCU. I don't think we see Hydra again. So let's kind of delete that and maybe. Um, say this is who Contessa Valentina Alec de la Fontaine is. She worked for S.H.I.E.L.D. very closely with Nick Fury. Now, what uh, what I think she's going to be doing in this is very similar to this, right? So we see at the end of WandaVision, we saw, we saw whatever outfit Nick Fury is with now can recruit Photon into her uh, little group and to work for Nick Fury to to uh, forward Secret Invasion, which is coming out next year or, or the year after. I don't even know when it's coming out. Um, here, I think, is what we see is, is Contessa is actually working for Nick Fury. That's what I think. And Nick Fury, uh, and, and they're recruiting U.S. agent, right? And they're recruiting, right. they, they're, they're recruiting John Walker to become probably the leader of that group. Right. And so we let's not forget that this is supposed to air before WandaVision. Right. So we right. should. So we see that they recruit uh, they recruit Captain America to lead this new group, probably against Secret Invasion. So Ooh, let's. Yes. Right. Let's right, not. Right. 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 So. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's a great point, man. So. So here's here's what because I've been reading. So a uh, bunch of people have been sending me messages on instagram emails oh, yeah. Dark hey, man, what, do you, what, what do you yeah. think right what do you think about this what do you think about that and two big points that they came out with the, that i that i'm taking away that you guys want me to talk about uh number one katessa and sharon stone sharon excuse me sharon, sharon carter. carter yeah I, I had to sauce a little bit too much before we freaking start um <laughs> might be scrolls right yep I was gonna go that way. You, yeah, you, you uh, because to there's it. yeah, there's too many gaps. There's too much stuff that they make that doesn't make sense. It's kind of awkward when when they're doing all types of weird stuff. And then the end scene where she's talking to somebody, it's just too weird um, for them to not be as gross. And that would be perfect. That's absolutely perfect to lead them into that whole secret invasion that you're talking about. So so I think that is a great freaking point. And 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 if they did that. If they did that what, later on, when people are going back to this, people are going to go, "Wow, they planned it out like that," and and that would be perfect. Uh, for yeah, they're going to so they they're got, gonna be saying, here. "Yeah, they were scrolls the whole time." Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, so. and that, that goes back to and that would actually actually go back to the whole Captain Marvel thing, um, where they implanted some of the scrolls there, and you know, Agent Coulson was freaking scroll there, and, and the thing that's worse about it for me. Is that now, if they started the whole secret invasion thing with Agent Coulson and all that, that means you know what I gotta watch. I, that means I gotta go back and watch Shield and see if there's anything that's indicated of there. Um, uh, I, I, as much as I love Shield starting out, I just didn't like it at the towards the end. You know when they were doing the whole Inhuman thing, and and that's mm -hmm. that, that's fine. But the, the, I'm enjoying what Marvel is, the MCU actually is doing right now, and, and it's just lovely. Yeah, I I think the MCU the continuity is tight. There, it's it's way tighter than the comics, and you know that's that's one of the things that I found enjoyable is that even they're challenged right now that we we we're, we're we're into the MCU is almost fifteen years old at this point now, and they are challenged with wow. what what I know believe hard to believe wow. right, um, but they're challenged now with with fitting things in in their continuity and having to pay attention and more attention than the books do by far 
yeah. how everything fits together. And when they do a retro movie like a Black Widow, and you know, well, I, I, I we're still talking so much about this a year after it's supposed to have come out, and we're not even going to see it for another couple of months. We're speculating that you know we might even we might even get scrolls in Black Widow. Mm. You know, and that and, it has and to then be. it has and, to be. And then we see that they've been around this, you know, this entire time. And then they can re- they can go back and retro. You know how you know how in Endgame they 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 redid the scenes with Loki mm-hmm. to make to make it look like you know this was just what always happened. We might see Skrulls and Loki <laughs> throughout his whole timeline. They we gotta, might see they got they got to fix the whole Hulk thing. Right, you know, yeah, they might go back. They, they, they might go back and do that. Right. Um, <laughs> uh, well, they they had the the She Hulk show that's coming out has uh, Mark Ruffalo it back, back as the Hulk, but no no one's talking about is they're actually bringing Eli Roth back as Abomination, mm. as a shout out for uh, that that original Hulk movie that had Ed Norton in it. Wow. So yeah, th- so that gives them an excuse to maybe go back and maybe reshoot some scenes there, you know. It is, you know, they can All they can they can do a lot. Yeah, they can do a lot. They they really really can. Um, but anyway, yeah, the introduction of Julie Louis Dreyfus that was the big reveal in episode five, and then she appears again in episode six, and um, with you know that was but that was probably the best. Well, there were a lot of really good moments in episode six. And I, I think um, I think the end of episode six or the end of Falcon Winter Soldier kind of um, it gave me a little bit of uh, you, ever, you, you know you, when you watch Lord of the Rings and the movie's over and then it goes on for another half hour <laughs> while they yeah. wrap up everybody's story. Yeah. That's what that's what uh, Falcon Winter Soldier felt like for me. Like it felt like this, the show ended in the middle of the episode and then you got all you got everybody's singular stories wrapped up and. This these are the these are where the uh, the characters are going to be put in play for the next Ooh. movie, right? So so yeah. that was that was where the setup Let's, was. So go ahead. I know you want to jump in. No, 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 no. I I don't want to jump in, but you know, let's. Whew, I, you know what? I should have actually had a photo for each and every single of these freaking characters, so we just go over what happened with them. So so oh. so, so the big thing for uh, once again, commenting on what everybody's been talking to me about is Sam Wilson and the fact yeah. that right now he has displaced Captain America as or excuse me uh Steve Rogers Steve Rogers as their Captain America. Yep. That that was like I was like what that is who their Captain America is for them now generationally Sam Wilson is now their Captain America. He said all the right things. He's done all, even though Steve Rogers fought World War 2 and blah 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 and everything. Um Sam Wilson right now is their Captain America, and they're feeling him right now. They are ready to follow this guy to the ends of the earth. They liked what they did with him. Um, what is what do you, what do you, I know, I, dude, dude, you don't even. I know for you, he's never going to be your Captain no. America. So, but. so I'm, I'm gonna, I'm, I might push back on you a little bit here because I actually. Uh, when they when when Falcon became Captain America in the comics several years back, um, I actually liked it because I was like anybody in Captain America's circle that would have become Captain America, it would have been Sam. And to to me, when they did it in the show, I was actually kind of excited to see it. But it, I actually wanted to ask you because at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter how I feel about Sam as Captain America, right? Because we kind of all know how, uh, you know. I love Steve Rogers' cap, right? Yeah. But I'm I'm not averse to seeing other people in the role, right? Because yeah. I, I, it's a, it's story, man. Um, I wanted to know how you felt how it was portrayed on screen. The the entire arc, Sam's entire arc. Oh my God, there is and, so many. Yeah, I mean, there are so many points that they hit that were perfect. Yeah, like, they didn't shy. They didn't shy away from a lot. The only thing I need now is I need a Native American Captain America. That's all I need now. But <laughs> that's all. That's all. I, so they 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 hit the Tuskegee the, the Tuskegee yep man freaking thing right. And then he's talking about hey as a black man and I have to pick up this star and pretend like everything's okay, right. Mm-hmm. And then and then he went off of that, and they started talking about the refugees and for those who do, I don't want to cuss y'all out. <laughs> but 
you who went on a rant in my freaking emails and D- DMs about you no know, the 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 leftist side of this, you got to realize that there are more countries in this world than the United States of America, right? Where there is problems going on, there is Russia and Ukraine, there's Iran and Iraq, uh, Iran, excuse me, Iraq and Turkey, there's uh, the Syria and Turkey stuff, there's the Israeli and uh, Saudi Arabia stuff where he was actually referring to the refugee situation in those countries, where the UN just comes in, set the settlement camps, and just says, hey, there you go, good luck. And he was talking to those situations perfectly so that he didn't freaking jump on one. He left it, he said, hey, I'm going to talk about the way the UN does refugee settlements and just leaves it like that, and then, and they don't have to do that. They could just build more houses. But according to restrictive zones, they can't build more houses because of what? And he just left it at that and just walked off into the freaking sunset, you know? So that in your face by Marvel and MCU, they're going to get some more wayward for me to do some crazy crap for the next five years. Because I can always come to this back to this moment to the Falcon and Winter Soldier and says, hey, we understand. We this this for me, this show right here. And remember, Marvel. I mean, excuse me. Uh, Disney has some crazy stuff, racist stuff back in their in their history. That's true. Yep. About three black crows and Uncle Joe and all the other stuff. They came. They came right at it. They came right at it. Stepped up to precipice and says, "Hey, we got it." But here's some other crazy stuff that's been happening, and that and that's fine. Um, I freaking loved it. I love the way they freaking talked about it. I love who talked about it and the way they talked about it and the characters that were that were representative of those arguments. I uh, so yeah, I'm I'm gonna agree with you totally. And it's a, the, you know the message that the show was sending um, to everyone, you know, not, not to to me, to you, uh, to everyone was um, that inclusive message at the end of the day, right? And you get you get different voices for for the different characters. Isaiah was the angry the angry you know the, the, that's what the country has done to me, and. Um, that was powerful in itself and to have him more kind of almost like i don't want to call him like the the obi-wan to sam but to have sam like really kind of discover that and like it was so obvious that sam was like it was like message received from from isaiah and uh, where where you can actually see the changing in sam's thinking Right where right. where uh, Sam, you could actually tell that he changed, and then, the God, man, Flag Smasher, who did, who who would not get behind Flag Smasher in her cause? That you know that this is this is a show that really had no villains, right? And where you would, like normally think of a like in the Caps in Caps comic, Flag Smasher, bad guy, Baron Zemo, bad guy. Here, yeah. everybody's shades of gray. Sharon Ca- Sharon Carter ends up being the bad guy, exactly. right? The power broker. And, yep. right, but, but, but in what gray area is she operating? She's not necessarily a bad person, but you do realize that at the end of the show, when she's, you know, especially if you saw the, the, uh, the stinger at the end, that she's working against America, but now she's on the inside working against it. But she's building up, she's building up Madripoor and, and she's going to sell secrets to the highest bidder. Um, so, I mean, yeah, that's, that's in, intentionally evil uh baron zemo blows up the rest of the flag smashers at the end uh that was intentionally evil um but the the their motivations throughout this show were not evil right uh they they did such a great job at introducing carly and explaining her motivations of the the five-year snap and how the world came together after like during those five years and now that everybody's back and they're expecting it to go back to business as usual and that's that's where the that's where the whole emotional core of this whole show is is right. how does the world react to uh, everybody being back exactly. <laughs> you know and, and you know what's even more perfect about that situation about carly and her whole cause right her car her their whole cause was we there's all these people that are back and nobody knows what to do with them and all we want is the peace and tranquility from when they were gone yeah and then in episode five 
you had a ring of these leaders that decided to do nothing. Yep. Their their whole big their whole big uh you know answer to the situation is just to send more troops to kill people and and, and put them in camps. That was their whole situation. That didn't need to be. Yep. Yep. That was never it's, that was man and, and 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 what's even crazier is you know Sam he comes in, he does this whole thing and then the three leaders they're just sitting there, standing there for some reason. He gets to freaking talk to them, talk at them, right? And then, and then they say, well, it's a lot more complicated than you even understand. And he's like, well, make it a little complicated. And then he just walks off. Like, no, that doesn't answer anything, bro. That doesn't even answer <laughs> anything. But, but then I had to sit back and go, oh, crap. That's exactly what America does sometimes. We say, hey, there's a problem. You fix it. And then, America, and then the rich countries go, you can, it's just it's just not that simple. And then we go, we'll make it unsimple. And then we just walk off. <laughs> so it's it. So, oh my, like, yo, it's you know to to me it was it was more of the uh, the let's so you're gone for five years and now you're back right and it's these people that had belonged before and now are a marginalized part of society and that was I think Sam's speech at the end there where he was like well man now you guys know how it feels. <laughs> you know and that's like but but to, at the point it's it, though his 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 argument was now we're all in this together now you know like like we've we've dealt with this i mean you guys have just been dealing with this since y'all got re you know came back from being dusted but we i've been dealing with this my whole life right and mm -hmm. that's that to me that was the message and that was where you know sam is saying let's all come together now because that's you know, now you guys know what we went through and or what we're continuing to go through. But everybody, you can't just you can't just put it back to normal, you know, and that's that to me was um, was I kind of feel like that's going to be the MCU going forward. I, I really love that they brought this up and they, they can like it. Come on, you can make you can make change on the on the TV screen. <laughs> better than you can actually make change in society but i mean those voices really get a, a chance to be heard and what on a platform like disney plus where it, in an and wrapped up in an entertainment uh right. uh so, form format right so, right so they have done an excellent job of flushing out their villains right showing like hey where the villains are coming from right so now sam he has proposed it like hey this should be easy guys just fix it. Just do this. Just put more resources yeah. towards it. Now, here's what they got to do. They got to show where it's complicated. They got to mm -hmm. they got to learn everybody. Got to teach everybody. Like, hey, it should be just as easy, but it, it's complicated because of that. If they do that from 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 here on out, I'll, I'll be freaking happy. Um, yep. Yep. And all, the, you know, I just I do want to touch on um, on John Walker's arc. Uh, who was almost like the opposite of Sam, but I mean, they all had the same arc where they started somewhere, ended somewhere else. And John, who ends up being, well, I'm taking over this mantle as Captain America with all the ideals and all the hopes and dreams that come with being the symbol of America and having, uh, having failed, right? And actually having the mistakes that he make, that he makes in the show reflect on the flag right and mm -hmm. and the reflect on america itself when you saw the end when we see the end of episode four when he's standing there with the bloody shield right. and uh and, and that symbol that symbol alone where he's standing and he's on foreign soil right it's on foreign soil yeah. and the red white and blue with the bloody shield and that's you know there's so much symbolism that they can do with that and then the show in the in episode five where he does kind of come up against um, uh, Bucky and, and and Falcon, and and then he, he gets drummed out of the service, dishonorably discharged, and and then he lands on he well I guess you would call it lands on his feet with um, as U.S. US agent right, right. Mm -hmm. um, 
But you see in episode six, he kind of has that almost redemptive arc, right? In in the space of a half an hour of <laughs> him fighting, uh, he fights Carly, and then he has to make the decision on, do I go after Carly to avenge Lamar, or do I save the senators that are about to fall to their deaths in the van, right? And that, it, it was so simple, right? It was so simple for him to redeem himself by letting the vengeance go and saving the senators, or at least trying to, right? Because right. he didn't really uh, succeed there. Um, but that's all that really took for for us to be like kind of forgiven. I'm like, oh man, everybody hey, makes a mistake. Uh, yeah, yeah, you were like, right? you're like, uh. oh okay, I could totally buy. I I can buy him now as a uh, as a redemptive hero. That kind of he tries to do the right thing, but he's not perfect, right? He's not he's not Steve Rogers, right? right. He's not he's not Steve Rogers that makes the right decision and and follows his heart. Uh, John gets let's let stuff get in the way, and that's that's all of us, right? right. So, well, 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 here's here's the lesson learned from that, including the certain court case to happen this week. Uh -huh. If you're going to do something bad or good, it's got to be in front of a bunch of cameras and in front of bu a bunch of people. They, okay, yeah, there you go. If he so. if he did that on a mountainside in <laughs> Afghanistan with no cameras around, who would know, right? Yeah, right. Exactly. Nobody would believe you. Like he killed who? Who? What? Like he must. That, that, the guy must have did something bad. We don't. We don't believe you. We, we, okay. Like, hey. Yeah. <laughs> I, and I've got several cases about that. I got friends that have done some crazy stuff that you know they just get away with shit because hey, if it's in a cave, <laughs> you know it might as well be in your dream. Um, yeah. So I mean, so bottom line is really, I just want to say, uh, this is this was a great show. I think this this did a lot of uh, it 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 asked a lot of questions and it and it asked a lot of hard questions, right? And it kind of um, it made you think. And I and and the the fact that you know they they throw some action scenes in there every every ten minutes. I oh, and, yeah, the action <laughs> scenes were absolutely I, awesome. I enjoyed. Yeah. I enjoyed all the characters. Uh, the only what one, about, you know, right. I feel like I, I feel like Winter Soldier didn't really like get his arc wrapped up as tightly and neatly as I wanted it to. That this show at the end of the day ended up being all about Sam. <laughs> Winter Soldier was definitely the sidekick in the show. <laughs> yeah, his his main therapy was he had a good talk talk with Sam, and then he read a book, and that was it. Now he's fine. You know, he was, he did yeah. the twelve he did the twelve steps. And now he's fine. Oh, so, yeah, like, hey. it, he was. He was definitely. You know, he was definitely the Robin to Sam's Batman in the show. So, uh, but but I. But I hopefully, he shows up in yeah. Wakanda, right? And yeah, uh, Black yeah. Panther. Now I would love to see him in, back there. Make him the White Wolf. Have him show up there. Um, the action. Once again, the action scenes were great. Of course, the the shining part, of course, was the suit. Sam's new suit. What did you think oh, of Sam's yeah. new suit? Um, I thought it was ripped right off, right out of the comics. I actually loved a few years ago when they debuted that that suit, um, and and gave him his own Captain America title as Sam. Um, that costume was legit, man. I liked it, and and have him with the wings and the shield, right? I, I just think that that gave them so much more things they could do. Um, I think that uh, well, actually the. Um, the neck piece with the mask, uh, he looked super uncomfortable wearing that. Mm. Um, with because it looked like it looked like it restricted his movement in the neck, and that's right. just that's just that was just a personal thing for me when I was watching the um, when I was watching the uh, the show yesterday. Uh, I just thought like the the whole neck bleeding into the cowl kind of mask um, mm. looked really uncomfortable. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. So, yeah. um, but but he looked great, man. That I loved the um, I loved the red, white, and blue uh patterns. Uh, it really was uh, if you compare him to the comic from several years ago, it's the it's the it's the costume that they they did a great job. Yeah, absolutely. What did you What did you think about it? I I was I was I was once again I was surprised. I knew it was coming, but I was kind of surprised. Um. I, I kind of wanted more of a connection in between that and Wakanda. I wanted to see the people on freaking Wakanda working on it. It's like, all right, hey, this it needs this, it needs this, and it needs that. 
We don't want U.S. agents to just be able to tear off the freaking wings anymore. All right. <laughs> we don't want the Ant Man to just be able to kick his ass from here to 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 freaking Maccabi Mountains. You know, um, <laughs> that, that's that's all that's all I freaking wanted. Um, <laughs> But there was a, he did a Mortal Kombat move in that. Did you see that? There was a, he had the shield up. He puts the shield up, and then he turns his his blasters on, and then rockets himself at uh, Batrock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I was like, I was like, that's like a Johnny Cage thing, right? There. <laughs> I thought it was great. But yeah, so speaking of Batrock, yeah, man, he's a character that keeps popping up not only in. Uh, some of these movies, but he's been popping up a lot inside some of the, uh, you know, the comics lately. Um, I've been harping on Taskmaster and Madam Mask, but yeah, Batrock, he's he's actually part of the Thunderbolts right now that I don't think they've terminated yet. Um, mm. So it was interesting to see him yet. Yeah, he died, but guess what? You no, know, Once again, in the comics, he will come back at some point. Um, well, we don't know if he's dead. He got shot, but that's the last time you'll see him. That's, so. that's true. That's true. Um, so keep an eye out for this, this guy. Um, and the interesting thing about you know Bat Rock Leaper is that there are several projects that are coming out that he definitely has a heart uh, has a hand in when it comes to like the Dark Reign stuff and Civil War. Um, so that's why, at least for Bat Rock Leaper, keep an eye out for Thunderbolts Volume One Number One Hundred Four. Um, is what I would tell my speculators. Uh, so uh, what do you want to do? Do we want to do we want to take a break or do we want to? Oh yeah, yeah. Let's take a break, and then we'll be uh, we'll be right back. You totally. We could have been talking for an hour, and I wouldn't understand. Hey, <laughs> hey, we're halfway through. All right, let's uh, let's see one of the other podcasts that we do here at Undercover Capes. Let me ask you a question: Are you wanting to read a new comic book that has nothing to do with the big two? Are you tired of looking through countless titles? and have no idea where to begin? Well, don't you worry, because the Random Dude Josh and Johnny the Machine Hughes has the podcast for you. Flipside Focus, only on the Undercover Capes Podcast Network. Ugh, I feel like there's so much to talk about still. Um, what did you think about the Shang-Chi trailer? I haven't seen it yet, um, but Shang Chi. I've been from what I've been reading through the comics so far. I'm not impressed. Well, it, it, it doesn't fit because, and, and I'm very perturbed because you had the new agents of Atlas, right? Where you set up a whole new group of Asian Pacific and Asian characters, yep. and you got Namor, which they did really well. I like what they're doing with Namor, and then all of a sudden you got you don't want me to care about Shang Chi. Sorry, not going to happen. Here's so here's what my potential problem with Shang Chi is going to be, right? So Shang Chi was created uh, by Steve Englehart, and um, I can't remember who the artist was, uh, but anyway, well, it's going to give credit to Steve for uh, for creating Shang Chi back in the 1970s because of kung fu movies, right? Because kung fu movies were so popular back in the 70s that they almost had to do uh, some kind of kung fu stuff in the comics so they did shang chi they introduced iron fist uh you know we, you get you had martial artists running around in shang chi here now here's the here's the issue is now you're going from uh a comic that was heavily influenced by the movies in the 70s back to a cinematic uh c back in the cinemas right so it's it's almost like a derivative of a derivative and uh for me uh I just uh, I thought the trailer just looked like another action movie. I just it just looked it looked generic. Um, right. It looked like it looked not like something um, that we would expect to see from Marvel. But I the, you know they've surprised me greatly before, so I'm not writing it off. I'm definitely going to see it. The Legend of the Ten Rings is that's Mandarin. A hundred percent. We're right. going to see Mandarin in this movie. Um, they, you know, they can't use so Ch Shang Chi back in the seventies. Um, they actually, uh, they actually appropriated a couple of actual novel characters. Fu Manchu um, exactly. is actually Shang Chi's father in the comic series. They couldn't do, uh, they couldn't do that 
here, right? Because because Fu Manchu and other characters that were that appeared in the Shang Chi uh, comic book were actually not owned by Marvel, <laughs> which Oof. is yeah. So so they really? can't do that anymore. Yeah, they own Shang Chi, but they and and they owned a couple of the other characters on the comic, but um, there were a bunch of other characters that we, they used in that comic that were actually on I think. Uh, created and owned by I think his name is Brandon Saxon. Don't don't quote me, but um, but yeah, for the Fu the Fu Manchu character, um, that was the main villain in that in that comic book series, was not owned by Marvel. <laughs> so right. so that would be probably why. Um, in the new comic book series, they built like three new characters, to include his sister and like two other people, and yep. none of them have any type of personality. Yep. kind of kind of boring but eh. yeah that's so that's and that's the thing i think that shang chi might suffer from is the fact that he is just a martial artist he doesn't have any superpowers and unless you do something really interesting with a kind of a supporting cast around him um he's just not going to be able to carry anything which which frightens me a little bit about the movie i'm still going to go go see it i mean the mcu well, still has not stumbled as badly here's, what, as here, here's what you need to watch out for uh, Mortal Kombat is out, I believe, right? Yeah, came um, out. It dropped and, yesterday. Yeah, yeah, and I believe I've been hearing people do not like Mortal Kombat. They think it's crappy. It. I, who was who's surprised about that? <laughs> well, there was a lot of people that liked the the first Mortal Kombat movie that they did. They were like, okay, yeah, that's great. No, I, I don't believe it. It was but... terrible. It was terrible. They're they're all terrible. It's a it's a it's it's a product based on a video game. Have you ever seen a good video game movie? Uh, maybe. Just the Not fact that you have to think about it. Yeah, because <laughs> uh, I, I was going to say Mario Brothers, but then uh, we were, you know, I can say, <laughs> dear, dear Lucas, <laughs> BTFO <laughs> on the Mario Brothers. Like, you know, <laughs> I, don't, I don't need Angry Moms of America if we can, if we can write me in Um uh, You know, there, there's, there's been the very few Right, and it takes a lot, right? Um, but Shang Chi, you know, I, 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 look, I'm 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 a Channel Nine martial martial arts lover, mm-hmm. right? but there's you got to give me more to it than some dude doing the 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 the, the pia, pia! You know, I I need more than that. I need, I need more backstory, and you yeah. haven't done more much, right? Your opportunity to do this Legend of the Ten Rings was right after that Iron Man Mandarin movie. Yeah, that was the time. Now I don't even remember what the heck could happen with that. They're gonna have to like re-explain. That. Yeah, re- they're gonna have to spend twenty minutes re-explaining that whole thing. Um, I, one more thing I'm gonna bring about Shang Chi, and then we can move on. Is what I told. I already told you derivative of a deriv- of a derivative. Um, Paul Glacy, who drew Shang Chi, man, if you ever look at his art on that book, Shang Chi is Bruce Lee. He is Bruce Lee. He's Bruce Lee is the model for the character. He they ripped off several actual Bruce Lee poses in the in the book. Man, I, I, the, I who is this guy? I can't remember his name. Is it is it Simu Liu or something like that? What doesn't matter. Doesn't matter because we're not going to hear about this a year from now. Well, <laughs> anyway, I'm just saying he's got his work cut out for him, man. And that's that's the thing, man. It's okay. Everybody's going to compare him not to, only to the comic but to Bruce Lee. Who gets compared to Bruce Lee? You can't. So that's that's going to be that's going to be uh, an issue, I think. Um, but. Let, who's you know who knows? Let's see. Uh, the Disney has not been dropping. Uh, you know, they have not yeah, been dropping not, a, a lot of problems, ball, so. right? Yeah, yeah, except for, I mean, so this, the actor's name is Simu Liu. Okay, so um, I pronounced right, it wrong, right? Right. So. so, so I wouldn't say that they've been perfect, and it, it, and any of the balls that they have dropped has not been on the part of Disney. For instance, a lot of people do not enjoy Captain Marvel, not because of the way it was structured, but because of the actor and the, what the actor did while they were shooting after the shooting in their comments. So that that's where it could go off. Is, you know, actors thinking that they're they're bigger than the whole universe and bigger than something else and just opening their mouths and just saying stupid stuff. Um, so there we go. 
All right. So let's let's let, let's move away from the MCU cuz uh, we do talk about comics here on the No Price podcast, right? <laughs> <laughs> so um you know I think uh and and I think Lucas agrees with me. Uh we kind of been staring away from uh from this being a purely comic review show not only because uh Disney Plus has been coming out with some awesome stuff that I think we should be talking about um but I, I think the lack of quality that uh, that Marvel has been coming out with has really impacted. Uh, for a, I'm not, I'm not speaking for Lucas here. My desire to actually want to talk about the comics that are coming out mm. because I hate. Um, I, I really, really am positive about Marvel, and I love Marvel, and I hate when I feel like I can't come on here and talk positively about what Marvel's doing in the comic book realm um, because I think that there's a lot of. Um, a lot of crap coming out and a lot of stuff that uh, I just don't think as a, as a comic reader um, that it's really stimulating me. Um, yeah. So, well, but, but we're going to get in, we, yeah. we're going to talk about yeah. some of it. So uh, I'll let you bring up some of, uh, some of this. So, oh good. yeah. So talk about Avengers. And um, first of all, Avengers number 45. Yeah. And why and... are we getting a King and black crossover two two weeks after the, sh the show's <sighs> over? Can't explain it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm not going to open my mouth for that one. I'm not going to open my mouth on that one. Jason Aaron, someone get uh, him on the. Uh, yeah. Don't but tell you, me it's you, a scheduling you, problem, you, right? Yeah. Can't tell me it's a scheduling problem because it, we're we're like a year and a half into fr the friggin' pandemic, so you can't tell me that the schedule was mess still messed up. It, so exactly a year ago, we actually talked about this, right? Jason yeah. Aaron. Donny Cates, L. Ewing, they are amazing openers. They know how to open up freaking stories and narratives oh, yeah. that'll blow your mind. That makes me that makes me as a speculator go back into the back bands looking for stuff. And going, Oh wow, that that's freaking great. The Marvel Universe is way better than anything else that's out there. And then when it comes to ending it and closing it out and making you feel good, they are terrible. And this is the this is just another we can drop in a bucket um, of what's going on. So remember, we are just coming off of this weird storyline with the Phoenix, right, where the Phoenix was looking for its new Ugh. champion. Um, nobody, it was a storyline that nobody, and I mean nobody, asked for, right? And what's even crazier is now we know for a fact that the whole Phoenix storyline was happening at the same at the same time as the King of Black storyline. Why? Because Maya Lopez as the Phoenix is inside Avengers Compound. Talk about nobody likes her. So we know it's not like two years ago or two years later or something like that. She's she's literally talking about how she just got the Phoenix thing as as they're just coming off the whole King and Black thing. Yep. Huh? So what was? Because I I would have thought that the whole point of the whole Phoenix thing of her or somebody getting the whole Phoenix thing was so they could take the Phoenix thing and then go fight Null as the King in Black. Oh yeah. Man, if, I'm, yeah if, I, if I'm Captain America, I'm pissed because I'm like, man, I got the Phoenix inside me, and then I got Venom inside me, and then I'm you know. I can, go <laughs> say, the can can I pilot my body for a minute? <laughs> yeah. Oh crap! On me, crap on me for thinking that way. That that would have made any type of sense. Because those here's here's another thing. Those two storylines just ended within a couple of weeks of each other. Are you really telling me that there was no way you could have tied those into each other? Yeah. Because what you what you're telling me is that you just ended that whole Nolan that whole Nolan Black with the whole Enigma Force, and then what happened with the Enigma Force? It just went away. It just went away. Nobody's going to hear from it again till twenty thirty years from now. And that, that was it. That was <laughs> that, that was it. Done. So let, let, let's just go on, let's go into what's what's happening in this thing right now. So apparently, and I don't even remember this whole point, is that the uh, the vampires apparently were fighting along the Avengers at some point. Um mm -hmm. for and fighting against no, I don't remember this. I barely remembered it. I, I would have thought they would have had their own book, or Blade would have had his own book, or Morbius would have had his own book where this would have happened. But no, it's it, it just it was it just happened. So 
now the vampires are saying, yeah, we fought alongside you guys, and we deserve some type of rep- reparations, um, such as our own country. It's okay. That, 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 that's that's fine. That's great. Let, let's let's make this a thing right now. Uh, and then they're like, hey, we don't want to be messed with. We just want to do what we want to do. You know, if any humans come around, hey, they're going to be uh, sweet game. We're going to kill them. You know, make food and and do do whatever. Um, and then the Avengers, of course, have to talk about it. Um, and they're saying, hey, if we let this guy do this, you know, the United Nations are going to do this. Blade, uh, Black Panther is talking to Blade and he says, hey, if they're going to do it, you cannot attack any of the vampires because if you go in as a, a member of the Avengers, that would actually be an act of war. And Blade says, I've been surviving without you. I'm gone. I, I officially quit and I'm out. Hey, Black Panther was like, no, no, we get pull it back. There's something else that we can do, um, and and that's and that's and I'll get to that. Um, actually, I'll get right that get right into that. Um, the the reason why um, Dracula is so intent on having them as a part of the United Nations and real world to become a part of the United Nations, there's a whole thing that goes into it because you got to promise to be a part of the security defense force and all that. But he wants, he wants that, um, is that his son, um, which was this guy, um, which is where they got the boy thing from. He wants him to have a seat at the UN. Well, here's the thing. Blade actually chopped off his head like issues ago. Like maybe like 20 issues ago, and killed them. Well, apparently they're going to bring them back and do do whatever. And okay, that fine, blah blah blah. But he actually doesn't actually show up. But they're just talking about, hey, Zeno, I think that's what his name is. They, they want him to be, have a chair on the United Nations. Crazy. So the uh, the Avengers they actually show up to talk to Dracula about what's going on. And this is the only panel that I think was actually a nice touch because this uh. This country that they're doing is uh, what was the name of the country that had the whole uh, Chernobyl, Chernobyl, Chernobyl. That's where that's where it's oh, right. Yeah. Okay, right. It was going to be in, this whole nation is going to be in Chernobyl, which to this day, what 50, 60 years later, um, hasn't been that long. Has, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's still yeah, it's still freaking radiated. You can't freaking go in there. Um, so this the. A nice touch to this was, hey, all the other Avengers, you know, they're there without their mask, except for the one guy that's still really human. Actually, actually there's two. Um, is Steve Rogers, and he's got his mask on, and then there's Black Panther, but he has his own vibranium type of mask on. Everybody else is sit, sitting there, you know, without mask on. So I thought that was a nice detail. Um, and then they show up and they say, hey, we're we're going to let you do your thing, Dracula, but on one one tiny little thing is that blade is going to be the sheriff of this country. doesn't make any sense for a one person to be the sheriff of a country, but there you go. That was their big, Oh, Hey, big surprise. I don't get it. But, but here, here, here was the, the interesting thing that they were positing to it. And, and this goes actually goes back to uh, some of the stuff I was talking about when it comes to the Falcon and Winter Soldier. Um, he was talking about, hey, we fought aside you in this big war in this great age of darkness. Yet when we came home, you just treated us like crap, right? Like we weren't freaking human, right? And that goes back to World War Two, World War One, and World War Two, where black soldiers actually fought in those wars. Yet when they came home. They were actually treated like they'd never fought, like they weren't even human. And it was eye-opening to them for black soldiers when they went over there because they were treated like human beings. But when they came home, they were treated like trash. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, and that was the only saving grace of this whole comic. But everything else was kind of ridiculous. I liked some of the interesting dialogue, you know, like uh, Captain, America, uh, Captain America working out. And he's like, oh, man, you just beat the, the new world record. And he's like, oh, yeah, delete record and all that other stuff. But uh, all the rest of the stuff was kind of, except for this piece, the rest of the stuff was kind of ridiculous. Yeah. I, you know, the I bitch about this book all the time because 
uh, um, the Avengers is near, very, very near and dear to my heart. It's my favorite comic. Uh, I grew up with it uh, as 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 a kid. It was my first comic that I ever read, uh, and so I, I do I do hold Avengers up to a higher standard than I think most people do. Um, and I've been complaining about Jason Aaron's run since the beginning because the Avengers are marginalized characters in their own book and. <clears throat> the more there are more side characters that show up that have nothing to do with the with what's going on in this book and at, up to the point i like kind of i like slow burn plot lines right so i like something if the if you see it a couple of issues before they actually get into the storyline i kind of like that slow burn but there are characters they introduce in this book that you are like expecting eventually to get take center stage that never do the vampires have been around here since like issue whenever blade showed up like 25 issues ago and they, yeah. they other than a, other than a one storyline they've just been kind of hanging around same thing with namor they would they did namor to death the squadron supreme has been bouncing around in here and it looks like they're finally getting the with heroes reborn next month but um mm-hmm. again again taking over center stage from the avengers because the avengers aren't going to be around and th- that that has been my issue this issue it was okay because of what you just mentioned where they showed they actually showed some of the avengers in the book actually being avengers right Mm -hmm. and to, to me that's what this book is is about rather than the the fact that i mean this isn't my favorite lineup um but how many times have you seen all the avengers together on a splash page like that you haven't mm-hmm. since mm-hmm. issue one, right? I mean, mm-hmm. it's 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 they, hard. They, are, they are if they are they're fighting each other. <laughs> yeah, or it's or it's only a couple of them. You know, uh, yeah. it's you don't see the whole team. Um, and they and the thing is, is like they keep referring to uh, Robbie as the new guy. Mm-hmm. And what issue is this? This is forty-five, or excuse me, fifty-four, right? Something like that. 47 I think or something like that it's, it's really yeah. it's in the 40s I mean dude he, he's been an adventure for like four years mm. and he's still the new guy yeah. blades the new blades the new guy Isn't you know like, yeah and and it's just like well well technically now Maya Lopez is a part of the adventure so she <laughs> no, but she's in a, yeah. so so let me get this straight so in one given week we've had null the god of darkness uh, Captain Universe, the God of Light, and the Phoenix, all on Earth. <laughs> yes. That, the, hey. yeah, the Phoenix, Null, and the Enigma Force. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. I guess <laughs> that's cool. For and and as soon as they get done, they just all leave. Except for the <laughs> Phoenix, and they just literally they just say, "All right, here we're here. We're gonna we're gonna mess up stuff, and then we're all just gonna freaking leave." <laughs> <That's literally laughs> what happened. It's uh, you know, know whatever, but anyway, um, uh, so uh, I I heard a rumor oh, like almost a year ago that Jason Aaron was leaving Avengers. He's still here, so you know I'm I'm looking forward to uh, I think I uh, hopefully I heard the Phoenix thing was his last arc, but I mean he, as far as I know he's writing the Heroes Reborn stuff, right? Oh, so disgusting. I've already yeah. looked at some of that stuff. I'm not happy. I don't even know. Like I, I've been trying to steer myself away from it, so I haven't. I like. I know that it's going to heavily involve the Squadron Supreme, but um, you know, I, wow. I, I'm I, I hold the Squadron Supreme up to a to a level to a standard that I don't think that they can meet either. Either. So um, you know, we'll we'll see what happens. And that's a, this is the one of the things that really kind of bugs me about what's coming out now is I really kind of feel like they don't really pay attention to what's happened before. Um, so uh, why should I care really? Um, mm-hmm. But let's, so let's jump into uh way of X number one, right. um, you know, uh, so we had Cy Spurrier as the writer, Bob Quinn, Spy, Cy Spurrier seems like I should be getting hair replacement products from him. Right? <laughs> uh, is that a weird yeah. name? <laughs> well, like I, a- there's there's a football coach who actually used to coach the Redskins. His last name was Spurrier. So that that's that's what it c- kicks off for me. Did, I don't know. Do you remember the commercials? Are like you know, I'm I, I'm I don't only like I'm I'm also a client kind of thing. Like I'm yeah. not. Is his name Spurrier? 
I th- I don't I don't remember that's <laughs> but that's whenever I think so whenever I see Cy Spurrier that's why the, that's the name I think but anyway sorry Cy <laughs> but anyway um so way of X seems to be the next I guess the beginning of the next chapter of of Hickman's X Men where like we've been talking about for uh, what oh look at almost two years now since yeah. they relaunched X Men um about all of the new concepts that Hickman had brought up. And now at this point, right, at the, we're two years in, uh, these are old concepts, right, that are kind of just hanging around, and they haven't really done anything with them. And they're still like, I mean, I can't believe two years later, this is like the talking about the uh, the death and rebirth of all the mutants, right? And that doesn't really matter. Death. We've talked about this before. Death doesn't mean anything anymore. They've conquered death. You die, you come back. Uh, they've done several of, uh, you know, the, the last uh, X of Swords crossover where they were just like killing mutants you know, left and right and they're bringing them back. And and it's just like, I don't care anymore, right? Yeah. And now they get to the point here in Way of X where you actually see and Nightcrawler being, I guess, is going to be the leader of, of this of this group and uh and i'm, I'm gonna get into my problems with the issue in a second but nightcrawler has been the one person that's been like what are we doing here you know uh this i'm a man of faith right i mean he's a catholic and he believes in god and this really kind of uh is a is a morale morality question for him right is right. to um to do we have the right to uh just just not not really care about death this way and he ends up taking a a group of the younger x-men into uh the venice right of course it has to be venice uh or the right. vatican it looks like the the picture actually looked like the vatican not venice right right it's it's their it's their cultural narrative headquarters and like inside some church yeah, in italy or something like that right yeah. and 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 in the uh in the battle, uh, you see that the younger X Men are just totally um, nonchalant about just laying down their lives. I mean, Pixie just puts her puts her head into a shotgun and lets somebody blow her head off, and you know, and and I I was reading it and I was just like, wow, you know what? Even if even if I knew I could die and just they could just bring me back, um, I don't think I'd be that nonchalant about sticking my head in an in front of a, a double barrel really? shotgun i don't know if that's if that's kind of the message first of all not really i don't know if it's the message i want to be sending to the kids that might be reading this comic but you know the to to, to for that to uh, happen and have nightcrawler watch it and you like i kind of it's like i know kind of what nightcrawler is feeling like because i would feel the same way is just be like these kids and they're like the I think the lingo that they were giving them like don't be such a Wanda or something <laughs> like that or some other stuff like there was a couple of other things that I was just like okay so now the the, the younger kids are getting their own like mutant type language that they just kind of it's their slang that they're using um, which I kind of thought was a neat touch um, but my my issue overall in 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 Hickman's X universe here and I think that they're trying to address that soon. Um, is the fact that there aren't teams, right? Mm-hmm. The X Men really there aren't no there aren't any X Men anymore. They're all just mutants, and they right. you, you get this way of X, and, and you uh, you have it right here on the screen where this is the lineup of characters that show up in this issue, but they're not a team. They're not like X Men Red, Gold, Blue, Black, whatever whatever color they are this week, um, and it, that to me. Is it, it's jarring because I don't know what I'm getting in each issue, right? I know maybe Nightcrawler is going to be the main character in this book, but are all these characters around for this story arc? And then I, I they reset and I get different characters. I don't know, and that's where I want like I want a book with my with my set X Men team that I can read about that actually go out and do stuff and fight stuff that I know are clear bad guys versus good guys. I, mm-hmm. it, it seems like every issue that happens. And if you, and again, this Orcus thing that you see, how many people are still reading the text in these mutant books? 
And I just, I, I'm having yeah. an issue with, with progress in this book. Like I want to see stuff resolved. I want to see the mutants interacting with the rest of the Marvel universe again. Um, they're act they're, they're, they're in a bubble right now. Um, I, I feel like they, they're not really fighting anybody. I feel right. like they're not, there's, there's that's no one that they're really yeah, against. Yeah, that's why they needed uh, extra swords. <laughs> but even that was terrible, right? Even that yeah. was terrible because it was, oh, God, it, who cares? It was, at the end of the day, it was like watching watching a video game play out, right? Because mm -hmm. it was, yeah. it was. Well, uh, see, and, and you know, this is not the book to introduce this, right? I mean, and they've been talking about this for a while, this Orcus. Right, the por the purpose of Orcas is that the terrestrial or humankind recognized that at some point, because of the mutants, that they would just become extinct. Right, so they were putting they put this whole organization together. They've got different freaking parts: the infrastructure, research, R and D, ops, you know, uh, sociology, um, you know, uh, cultural narrative, which is what the, what what they went up against today or excuse me, in this book. And there's supposed to be this whole big thing, this organization that goes against the mutants to wipe them out or just at least stem their influence. Uh, the, I, I just don't know exactly where they're going with it, and I don't think they know where they're going, going with it. However, what I do know is I do know their schedule. <laughs> well, that's, okay, thank you. That, that's the one good thing about about the X books is that they are on a they are on a on a um, on a schedule and they do come out on time. Um, but here's here's one of the other things that that pissed me off is you have you, you have these text pages, probably three or four of them per issue, which takes the place of art, by the way, which I don't like. You know, I don't like the black and white kind of. Uh, you know, I, I when when Hickman first came out with the X, it was it was good because it was dynamic and it was new and you hadn't seen it before. Um, I hate that they make you read these text pages to explain their plot mm. and to explain who the characters are, but then you redact half the shit. So I don't yes. know what. Like, I mean, don't be trying. Don't be so mysterious, right? You know, but I mean, right. come on, Orcus, and you can't even read half this stuff. Right. Like, okay, I, I kind of get what you're telling me, but you don't want me to know everything. Right. I'll give you another example. Uh, so they talked about, in fact, let, let me let me go through this part, right? So at some point um, at the Nightcrawler and the organization comes back, um, they're having a conversation with Magneto because they found some stuff with Magneto's inside that, that church, right? And uh, Magneto goes in this long diatribe about how Newton should have been working all, all along. And, and you know, Kurt says, well, you know, that's not the way should, stuff should have been. You no, know, we got to do this, got to do that. He says, well, we could do that, but you got to come up with the gospel for it. You gotta come. You gotta freaking put the lay down, the lay down work. He said, and I thought you were supposed to be working on that. And he was like, uh, you know, typical slap slacker. You know, uh, shrugged his shoulders, right? So later on, uh, Kurt is actually out in the woods, and he comes across Doctor Nemesis, right? Um, and Doctor Nemesis has an interesting, strange look, and he talks about. The Dunbar theory says so the theory proposes that there's a limit to how many direct relationships that the average human can maintain, and that's about 150 people or so. Right? Um, beyond that, just to keep the peace, societies require abstractions, uh, shared ideas, the things that have no reality unless the majority chooses to act as if they do. This is uh, laws, currencies, social rituals, figureheads of good or evil. Uh, and Kurt says, yep and mythologies, which would go right after religion, right? And then he says, well, the absence of a truly remarkable mind expander to rapture us all into the pixel of his dimension. Uh, he's, Dr. Nemesis was saying, hey, I was hoping that you would take care of that whole religion part, the whole mythology part, instead of having to do all the other stuff. Because remember, there's a whole bunch of books that takes care of the other stuff, the laws, the currency, the money, and all that other stuff. So it was Kurt's responsibility to take care of the religion and mythology stuff. And then Kurt says, well, what if I have known shared ideas, right? Um, because he's mostly a, uh, a Catholic, right? And, of course, you got 
all these other mutants from all across the world. So, of course, they're not going to be able to just share and understand this whole Catholicism thing, right? Especially for where they want to go. And he says, what happens if I cannot find these social rituals? He says, well, theoretically speaking, violent social societal collapse, right? Um, but don't worry. The likely outcome is that the strongest individuals simply invent rituals of their own, <laughs> which is where you got the, the Thunderdome where you got the mutants killing each other for the right to freaking die so they can be resurrected. And there you go. Um, that was that was the freaking great part. But the part where we're talking about the – and then they go into this whole thing. What's got here, here's the text, right, where, which is where they're trying to explain the whole science core. And you got redacted information, redacted this, redacted that. Um, I, I, I like where they're trying to explain that, but don't redact stuff. Either give it to me straight, or if we can, or or just leave it out. Right, and it, um, it, it makes me wonder if they red act stuff because they don't know. <laughs> yeah, they're, just, they're like, ah, oh, what about this? Uh, we'll figure it out later. Just redact it. And then, yeah, you know. it's kind of like that whole like when you watch in La, when you when you watch in Lost like fifteen years ago, and they're like, man, they're just not telling us because they don't even know where this is going. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's kind of how I feel. Um, but it, I mean. Uh, it, it's frustrating because I understand that they're trying to. So this is here. Here's what I will give these guys credit. They're saying, "Hey, the X Men freaking world was just crazy and all over the place, right? One minute they're yeah. doing this, one minute they do that. So let's put down these laws and these rules so that everybody can understand it, so they can't freaking call call us out for doing just crazy stuff. All. And that's that's great, but don't freaking give us this. Hey. This is what is happening there, and then redact half of it. So, and and that's a great point that you bring up because I'm going to argue that this book didn't have to be Way of X number one. It could have been X Men number twenty seven, or it could have been X Force number eight, or it could have been Marauders number seventeen. I don't know what book I'm reading half the time. They all look alike. They all sound alike. That you don't know which characters you get in which book. It, so it doesn't really matter what the name on the front of the book is. It's just, you know, I, I just don't get why um, they can't uh, they can't be more distinct, right? A more mm -hmm. like separate separate the books more. So so I care about the characters in the books more than the name on the book. It's I, like I we, I read an issue of New Mutants. It could have it could literally be any of the other eleven mutant books that come out. Exactly. I, I swear to God, they don't have it. There's no, um, there's no separate identity, and that's what they, that's what there needs to be. There needs to be identity, and um, you know, when I see books like this drop, or books like Children of the Atom, who, God, who, who cares, right? I don't want to. I don't want you guys to introduce seven new mutants that look and sound like the original five. Uh, Show me some of this. I mean, you've you've brought back every single mutant that there has ever been. Show me some of them. You yeah. know, some of the ones that have been like on the outskirts of, uh, you know, uh, of mutant society. You just see them in background shots. Do some of them. That's you know. The, I mean, we we're a year and a half in, and this is really the kind of the first time we've seen Nightcrawler in a long time. Exactly. You know? I mean, so. he's he's been jumping around in Marauders, but nothing that was like story story centric. Around what the heck he's been up to, yeah. which is a shame, right? Um, you got to give me more of him. Figure out like how does he feel about all this stuff that's happening, right? Yeah, like, like because I understand they're trying to progress, but usually the thing that stems is progress is some guy that's not only hey, there's some BS going with it. You can't be doing that because yeah. if you do that, then this, then you're you're going way over the over the line. And you know what we haven't seen yet, and I'm really kind of surprised we haven't seen, is mutants that don't agree with the way that Professor X is doing anything and leave Krakoa. Like, we don't see anybody that's, like, a refugee from Krakoa or has tried to get asylum, like, with the Avengers or something like that. <laughs> you know, not that, the, not that I would want, anybody would want to go over to the Avengers at this point, but it's, it, you know, that's that's the one thing that I'm like... And so everybody's on board with this. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's that's a tough thing, right? Because technically, you've got the two countries, right? Um, you've got Krakoa, and then you've got Arako, 
right? So right. it's supposed to be huge. It's supposed to be enough space for everybody. Um, enough space, enough resources for everybody. So what I would look forward to is there, there's got to be one inciting incident. That one inciting incident that basically, hey, I'm not okay with it. And so far, the thing that seems to rub everybody the wrong way is the way that you have to die or you got to go through this process or that process in order to prove that you deserve to be brought back. That is the one stimming freaking resource that 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 exists. Well, the other thing is that they don't bring that they don't bring back clairvoyance, right? <laughs> so that's that's what I thought was weird too, and and I I really wish that they they dig that into, but I think. Um, you know, I, I, eventually these stories, the stories are going to wrap up, right? I mean, they can't mm. stay on Krakoa forever. Who may, or maybe they can, I don't know. But, yeah, um, yeah but, I mean, yeah, like, like, uh, like I pointed out, the, let's see, Children of the Atom, that's already out. Uh, X Core, that's supposed to be in May. Uh, in fact, let me, uh, let me, if we can bring that, let me see if I can bring that up. Um, but yeah, see, 33. Yeah, so uh, we did X X Core uh, number one is in May. Hellfire Gala, um, that's in June. Um, X Men, that's the X Men number one, July twenty twenty one. So so they're why, re- why so they're relaunching X Men. Yes. So they're relaunching X Men, but with the uh, with the team with right that the, the team concept mm-hmm. that they actually put it to the fans to vote the last member in. I and, so, uh, right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, Whatever. I don't know why they need to do X Men number one, right? Let's stop, stop restarting it. Stop restarting. Just let's just go with legacy numbers, you know. Yeah. Um, classified number one. That's as apparently a redacted <laughs> redacted title. Yeah, it re- yeah. It, it, September. Look at that. Who's the artist? Who the heck knows? We're not gonna let you know yet. <laughs> and then there's a big one with in uh, September 2021 with just a big question mark. So. Yeah, Jonathan. Well, oh. actually, we well the one good thing is you get a Jonathan Hickman is coming back to actually write some of this stuff instead of just being the overseer of everything he created two years ago. Yeah. He's like he's become like the Stan Lee of the X Men. Mm. So uh, and then so let, let's let's start closing it out. Uh, yeah. So the, the last piece of way of X number one was there's this character in there. This was this first appearance of this character. We don't know what the name of this character is. All we know is that the character says, "I'm lost. I'm lost. I'm lost." So I just call it. Lo- I just call her lost. Uh, she actually had to die to be rejuvenated and everything. Uh, she was killed by Magneto, and then when she was brought back, she has this weird way of messing with the Earth's gra- gravity, and she made like all the X Men sick, just like boom, like that, like without even thinking about it. Um, she was, she's kind of powerful. Um, Carnage, Black and White and Blood has a new character in there. It's a little boy. His name is Brad. Um, apparently, he has been symbiotic or parasitic with the uh, with the Carnage symbiote. He actually ended up killing his dad or actually his stepdad in this one, um, which was kind of interesting. Um, can I they, can I jump in on Carnage for a second? Yeah. Did go you ahead. read Did you read the whole book? Uh, I I skimmed through the whole book. Um, but this so, one was the thing that helped me. Go ahead. Three stories. There's three separate stories in this book, and that, uh, the black, white, and blood books because this is a Wolverine book too. They have uh, their their anthology stories, right? So mm-hmm. the first one, um, the the first story, would they actually touch on the fact that um, Venom spawned Carnage as a, his seed, right? Mm-hmm. Which is the actual story. The the, the Carnage symbiote. Was was kind of Venom's the Venom symbiote's child, right? Uh, and then in the third story, Carnage tells a story about how he how his uh, he fell to Earth. <laughs> so it was two separate like origin stories in the same book. But anyway, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, 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 that's it. Oops. That's all you need. That's, that's all you need. <laughs> you know. Yep. Uh, uh, let's see, I'm trying to see who the guy was because, yeah, I'm seeing what you're, what you're talking about. I'm trying to see if they have a name for the guy. It just says, My name is Carnage, but of course, we know that's not true because, um, you know, the Cletus Cassidy's ancestors was 
you know, one of the first ones that would have came in contact according to all this stuff. But yep. Uh, so let's move on. Uh, Champions number six. Um, so this one has been developing for quite some while. Andrew and excuse me, Andre Sims he used to work for a Tony Stark Corporation, mm-hmm. um, and he was developing some software and some robots for them. But then uh, Riri and her app caught on to what they were doing, and he got conjectured. They put him to the side, so he just quit and he actually goes to work for Ro- Roxon. And now he's developing software and robots for uh, for Roxon. And now you can see he's developing this huge ass robot. Um, don't know why it's pink, but but there you go. <laughs> could um, be light. Could be light. So he so he's developing into a potential villain, potential you know adversary for for Riri. And he first shows up in Ironheart from a couple of years ago. He was mm-hmm. he was a uh, he was a bad guy briefly there, but not much of one. So right, yeah. I mean, she, she yeah, yeah, like he, like the. Uh, uh, Riri's AI just bust in the freaking windows, and he almost like crapped his pants. But uh, but it looks like he's building something to be able to compete or re actually fight against that software. Um, so that's going to be interesting to see it going forward. Mm. Uh, Mighty Valkyries number one. Um, apparently Loki's got kids now. Uh, <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Certainly. Um, the 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 mother. I forget the name of the mother. Um. But she's been around for for a while. She's kind of on the gray line of the whole you know, Asgardian thing. She's 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 dirty, dirty. But in this one, she, they're they're kind of showing her in an interesting, different light. Um, I don't know the circumstances under which she and Loki got down, but here you go. Now they got triplets on the way, um, and apparently there's some other kids that he's got that are trying to kill Loki right now that actually have taken the form of a dog, but there's two souls in this one dog, and they're trying to kill Loki for right now. And he's asking for Jane's help to, to not die right now. So there's there's all types of weird stuff going on right now. And, and uh, that one, I don't know where that's going, but hey, here you go. And I think... Go ahead. Yeah, no, there's a, just a, they, they introduce or reintroduce uh, the... I want to say it's the Tessa Thompson Valkyrie from Thor, uh, uh, the last Thor Ragnarok movie. Um, they kind of uh, she's appeared in Marvel before, but I think they kind of did do a big reintroduction here. Um, I'm I'm not sure about how I feel about multiple characters running around with the name Valkyrie. Um, I think it's a bit confusing, and I think that if they want to use continue to use Jane Foster as a as a major player in the Marvel universe, especially a strong female character, make her the only Valkyrie, and, and right. figure out something else to call uh, the Tessa Thompson version. I think they actually give her a name at the end of this book. It's something like Runa. Runa or something like Runa the Valkyrie, um, so it is just. I know that there's a whole bunch of different Valkyries, but um, right. Well, they should do what. So so let me let me roll it back. In the Black Panther or Wakanda universe, right? There's actually supposed to be two Black two Black Panthers, right? One Black Panther that rules uh, the land of the dead, and then one that rules the land of the of the living. So Shuri is supposed to be the Black Panther that does living in, but they they messed that up because people couldn't didn't grasp it. So in the <laughs> Valkyrie universe, there's actually supposed to be a Thor that does the land of the living, and then there's supposed to be the Valkyries of Hell with Hela, and then there's supposed to be one of what's the name of the heaven where all the warriors go? I forget the name of uh, Valhalla. Valhalla, right? So it's supposed to be that thing. But they haven't focused on that central part. It's such an important part that's just lying there. Just freaking give me that. Just give me. You can give me three freaking Valkyrie stories: one of the living, one of the freaking dead, and one of freaking hell. But they haven't done it because they. I, I don't know why. It's just sitting there, <laughs> them to the freaking develop. And I would even love a TV series on how that works. But they haven't done it. They've been on some other BS. But you know. <laughs> let, let, let Marvel do what they're going to do. All right. Do you have any other mar- uh, honorable mentions? Uh, sword number five. Um, first appearance of this cur- character called Korra, uh, the Burning Heart, uh, who is the fire of the soul. 
and the murder in the dark and she's from Araco. So Araco was that so remember there was that whole thing with Swords of X where at the end uh, Apocalypse um, went to there and in exchange the people from Morocco got to come out of that dimension and now they are a part of Krakoa. Well, this is one of the citizens that came out of that whole thing. Um, Cora, don't know what's going on with it and what her role her or his role is going to be, but that was that was an interesting thing that was coming out. And I believe that that is the last part that I got out of that um, going forward. So all right. Uh, a lot of, lot of, lot of low level stuff. A lot of stuff that just doesn't make sense. Um, <laughs> and once again, I, I said before, you know, I'm going to give Marvel a wide berth for what's going on because they need to fix their timelines and stuff. But there's there's stuff that's just sitting right there that they could fix, but they had decided not to. And said we're still getting like 20 to 30 books a week. Yeah, you know? yeah, it's true. Slow down, Marvel. All right. <laughs> Slow down, Marvel. All right. So uh, that's going to do it for this episode of uh, No Price Podcast. Thanks for sticking us sticking with us all the way to the end. And we will see you again in a couple of weeks. And um, you know what? We might not have a lot of MCU stuff to talk about because I think we're going to be uh, right the week before uh, the week before Loki drops. So maybe we'll uh, we'll find something something good to talk about. <laughs> yep. Well, uh, right. one, so one more thing. Uh, Silk number two, beige. That Rose Beige uh, variant is coming out on Wednesday. Uh, so I forget what the date is for Wednesday. So the 20, what's the date for Wednesday? The 20, uh, 28th. The 20, correct, 28th. It's a yellow freaking background with uh, silk just chilling. If you see that on the, if you see that just sitting out there, do not leave it on the freaking racks. That's going to be a hot freaking book. You heard it here first. All right. All right, so I'm interested to find out if anybody's going to get that book. <laughs> oh, everybody's already gotten, gotten that book. I got uh, five people that ordered that book from me already. Nice. All right, so uh, we will see you again. Uh, it'll be May by the next time we talk. And uh, until then, stay safe. All right, all right. <laughs>